What's going on fragrance family? Welcome to another episode of Taking a Test Drive. This series is where I wear a scent on my skin as my scent of the day for several days, including today. And this is from my own personal collection. And it's time to give you my thoughts before it goes into the vault for a full fledged review. Today, it's not a secret, you see it in the title. It is on the house of Amouage. I haven't spoken about Amouage in a few years. It's been a while. Um, and anytime I shoot a video on a Amouage scent, especially from the Christopher Chong uh, era, uh, my videos run long. And I'm sorry about that, but I absolutely love this line. I love the creative direction. I'm, I'm not upset, but I'm sad to see him go from the house of Amouage because he just had, it just clicked for me. His collection uh, was absolutely stunning. So I'm happy to talk about one of his later releases and this one of course called Imitation Man. And I wouldn't be surprised if this test drive runs uh, 10 plus minutes. Uh, usually these test drive videos are a little under 10, but let's see what I can do. Now on to our sponsor of the day, FragranceX.com. I did want to take the time to thank FragranceX for Imitation Man, and you can get a bottle of this on their site. Uh, check out FragranceX. Support me by utilizing my coupon code on their site. It is my channel name, Robes08, and you get 15% off on your purchase, and I highly appreciate that. Now let's go under the hood for Imitation Man. Release date was back in 2018. Uh, the nose behind this is Leslie Girard. Uh, the major notes to my nose, and that's where, again, this is not a full-fledged review, but I was just battling myself on which three am I gonna pick? This is an iris-based fragrance, and it gets compared a lot to Zee Autumn. This is not Zee Autumn. It is not. If you're thinking an upscale, better Zee Autumn, well, better Zee Autumn, maybe, but um, it definitely isn't in the same genre. Um, yes, they both use iris. So iris is a major note, leather is a major note, and the rose is a major note. Now this one is going to be a journey. This test drive is, and it's gonna be one hell of a journey. And I don't mean journeyman. <laughs> yes, an Amouage joke to start us off. Let's start sniffing this one. So like I said, this one is my scent of the day today, but I'm gonna remind me of this introduction, this complex introduction. Uh, for imitation man and oh what a what an interesting opening um this opening is a complex one and this is what i want from the brand of ammo ash that's exactly what i want it's not an easy nope opening to love so it may take the user a few wearings before getting this scent and appreciating this scent. I mean, it did take me a few wearings actually, and I'm gonna to get to that. Um, the opening to me is threefold. And I don't mean, you know, the opening, the heart and the dry down. I mean, this opening just changes drastically in the first few minutes. Um, there's that cedra start, that bright cedra start. Then it goes into a spicy kick and that's the interesting part of it. But then it goes into a more of the mellowed, um, the bulk of this fragrance, the leather and the floral combination, but it changes so much within the opening. So Imitation starts us off with that bright cedra note. There's a jammy rose backing it, and there's a splash of that suede-like leather that will morph on my skin later on and actually amplify. So that leather is going to amplify quite a bit, but at this point right now, it's very smooth and in the background. The jammy rose is secondary in command with the cedra. It felt at times um, fruity, uh, but it's not distinct to one particular fruit. Um, it is very much a fleeting part of the opening. And then you get hit with spices right after. And as quickly as I said that, it's morphing into the spice section right now. The, the spice section is the more, the most intriguing part. I wouldn't say the most intriguing, but it is a very intriguing part of Imitation Man. And I think that's where you're going to lose some users and um, you're gonna have some that are gonna hang on. The spice section gave me so much different imagery on these several wearings, and I don't know where I wanna go with this review, so I'm gonna talk about all of them. And once I get into the full-fledged review, I'll kinda let you know what I really get, because at times I was getting, um, it's very herbal and spicy, so it comes into different areas. It smelled like an herbal tea at times, maybe it was that cedra coming in, um, with some of these herbal takes and these spicy takes that it, it smelled like that. During one wearing, the whole thing kind of mishmashed and smelled like black licorice to me. And on most wearings, it's an aromatic spice bowl. Um, lots of nutmeg in this thing, um, lots of black pepper, 
um, but you don't get much of the bite from the black pepper, but it's there. Um, very intriguing portion of Imitation Man because when you're thinking a heavy iris fragrance, you're not expecting something like, not a lot of fragrances have that kind of layer. Now, after that, that's when it starts mellowing into what people start talking about that Diada mishmash. You got that iris, that orris roots coming in, you got that leather. So th that's the combo that people are familiar with. They start dominating the set. The leather here, interesting to say the least. Um, it has a vinyl plastic like quality, which is odd yet interesting to a scent head like me. And that's again, you may lose some people because this leather is not an authentic leather to me. I mean, it really feels like, again, like I said, like a, a vinyl record type of smell. Now that iris helps that idea. Why? Because it has a waxy quality to it. So it kind of helps that imagery of a vinyl record. The floral trifecta then blossoms here. And that's where this thing goes into a different direction. Now the trifecta is the iris, which takes charge. The jammy rose is back in it. So the jammy rose from the introduction, even giving, you know, like kind of like that fruity aspect. Now it's giving a little more of its personality here. And of course you are getting the violets. Personally, I get all the florals in this scent. And some reviews say, no, I'm not getting this. I'm not getting, that. I'm getting all three of these. And they all have their unique personalities. Some of the notes actually coming in and out of the scent, playing games, um, namely mo mostly the rose, kind of in and out. Um, I was dissecting it and I was saying, oh, where'd the rose go? And then it came back more into the back end of the fragrance. Um, so it was very interesting. All the florals excellently blended in this fragrance, like to a T, beautiful. They all have their personalities. They all give something to this fragrance, beautiful. The opening gives me herbal components, fruity components, spicy ones. It gives me a little bit of smoke. It gives me floral components, woody components, um, even some weird waxy vinyl record kind of component. Um, blend, composition, simply outstanding in this opening. Keeps you guessing. Um, and it's exactly what you come to expect from an amouage opening. Let's get into the dry down. Now the dry down of Imitation Man continues on that path. The three-headed monster of iris, powdery, waxy, violets, jammy rose, paired with a soft suede-like leather. Some woody aspects come up a little bit more. Light myrrh comes into play. A castorium that is well blended that you'll never know it's in the scent. So don't think it's going to get animalic on your skin. It never did. The weirdness was more of that leather vinyl. Castorium could play a part in that. Um, overall, uh, this fragrance is, it brought me to so many different places. It's a typical Amouage release from the olden days. It's artistic and it's simply fabulous. Um, I absolutely love this release. And it's one of those that's kind of like a secret gem in my Amouage lineup. I'm usually going for my Jubilation or my Interlude, my Memoir, and some of the newer stuff uh, for spring. And this one kind of got lost in translation, but uh, this seven day testing really showed me the love that I have for this fragrance. And I'm gonna be wearing a lot more. Now let's get into Seasons, Day Night Versatility Performance. Um, seasons, this has early spring, and uh, of course the whole fall season written all over it, but also very solid. Again, I'm testing this in the winter of our Canadian winters. And just like any Amouage does, it did its thing. Um, it did really well. Day or night, this is more of a nighttime scent. Uh, versatility, fairly average. Um, again, when you're thinking Diaram, Diaram, very versatile scent. You can dress it up, dress it down, all that kind of good stuff. But this has some aspects to it, the spice, the, the vinyl record. Um, it has some interesting things. So it brings down the versatility a little bit, not for someone like me, but maybe someone newer to the game. Performance, that's where Amouages do shine and this one does go into that bucket. Longevity nine to 12 plus hours, any given wearing. Um, it just did well on my skin. Projection was above average. So again, very good in the performance section. So my final thoughts on Imitation Man and this is its coming out party on my channel. I remember unboxing this and going, eh, I don't know. And it kind of collected dust, I'll be honest. Imitation is part of the end of the Christopher Chong creative direction era. This is when Amouage was kind of getting away from their silver frankincense eras that they were known for and started going more green, more floral. Um, they're getting, some say a little more easy to wear. 
and I can see that. It has that familiar complexity that I come to expect from a Christopher Chong uh, fragrance um, from his early times in Amalgash. It kind of went back, it turned back the clock a little bit. The balance of the notes have always been excellent during his era, and this is no slouch. This one gets compared to The Autumn, and I said it a few times in this review, but this is so much more. It's like The Autumn being mixed with several other components that pull you from one end to another. Um, it's way more interesting, can I say? Like The Autumn's kind of boring, but it's well done. And I don't want to poo-poo on The Autumn. It's a good set. And I'm talking about the OG The Autumn, not the one that they're selling now. Um, but it has much more density to it. Um, and with you know, the bottle, the look of the bottle, it has much more colors than a Z Autumn. It has personality. And for that, it may miss the boat as being an upscale, iris, waxy, lipsticky, safe zone fragrance that is upscale and you can wear it with the tux. This ain't it. Um, this is a fragrance that brings the note of iris and brings a different facet to the game. It's, it's amouage through and through and it's, probably one of the only brands that can really do this with this kind of note and go off the wall with it. And they completely hit it out of the park actually. So great job on imitation. As always, Amouage, Christopher Chong releases, make things interesting, creative, and complex. The introduction of this scent is a mishmash that just makes a fragrance head actually really happy. It's bringing you different places. The dry down slows things down a bit, but keeps it interesting. Could this be? And I was thinking about that when I'm writing this, uh, this stuff up after the seven day testing. Could this be the most underrated amouage in the men's aisle? Possibly. And I know the ones before that, a lot of them have been great. And I know, I think Epic Man never got the love it deserved. And that's one of the early er releases. Um, I feel like that one didn't, but everything else after that kind of got its shine. And this one, I don't think did. This was an amouage I bought then ignored, and this is being completely honest. And with a collection like mine, that will happen. And that was before this review. It was not getting any love from me, perhaps because there's so many great scents from the brand that I gravitate towards, and of course that I have attachments with. This seven day testing just opened my eyes on how great this scent is. And I just needed time with it. That's basically it. I won't be ignoring imitation anymore. Actually, this fragrance and this testing renewed my love of the brand and actually made me go on websites and see, okay, what have they been releasing? Not that I don't know, but looking at the note breakdowns, seeing a little bit of reviews of the scents that I actually never bought or smelt from Amouage, I kind of left when Chong left. <laughs> so now I am going to give the newer releases more of a chance and off the strength of this test drive, I've ordered several samples of the brand that I didn't own. So in this short test drive imitation did what Amouage releases should do to a frag head. It made me appreciate the scent itself and the brand even more and intrigued me to test more of the brand. That's what it should do. So imitation man, what a great journey. And I know I'm talking about like it's been years, it's been a week, but uh, what a great scent, an absolute stunner, something that I ignored. Uh, bought and then ignored. So I'm happy to have it in my collection. I hear rumblings. I don't know if it's just in the States, but this thing has been discontinued. I don't know. I didn't really do that kind of research on it. If it is unfortunate um, to hear that because this is an excellent release, but now <laughs> I'm sure it's been more than 10 minutes. I'm done with it. I'm done with Imitation Man. It's time for it to go into the vault for full-fledged review, but it's time for you to hit us up in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this fragrance. Did it did it jive with you? Or maybe you tested it once and you didn't give it the chance that I'm giving it now, just like I did. Um, maybe it's time to revisit this one. Looking forward to reading all your comments below. And as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube.